Schatz. Welcome back guys to another Clash Royale video and today I want to show you guys the deck that I use to reach Arena 7 on my brand new account. As you can see we're currently sitting at 2019 trophies in Arena 7 and here's the deck itself. It's a pretty standard giant support deck. If you guys have watched my videos for any length of time you'll notice that a lot of these cards in here I use in pretty much all my decks like the Cannon, the Zaspel, the Goblins, the Musketeer as well as the Valkyrie and that's just because I have a lot of experience with those cards so I prefer using them because I know the ins and outs of those cards but if you guys want to use different cards I'll offer you some ideas. If you want to get rid of the giant you can go ahead and use like a Hog Rider or even something like a giant skeleton if you want to use barbarians in your deck i would suggest getting rid of the valkyrie if you want to use a mini pekka i would suggest getting rid of the valkyrie the minions or the goblins and if you want to use an inferno tower instead of the cannon you can go ahead and do that i just personally prefer the cannon because it's cheaper in elixir cost and allows for faster cycling and i would much rather prefer to spend my elixir on a troop over a defense just because your troops will go back on a counter push for you whereas your defenses will not and as you can see here a lot of my cards are actually still level one so i've just been using the cards that i've had since the beginning of this account so let's go ahead here take a look at this deck in action on the road to royal arena so here we are guys facing off against a level 7. Now my opponent has a ton of epics in his deck. He has the P.E.K.K.A, the Goblin Barrel, the Skeleton Army as well as the Witch. So a total of 4 epics in his deck which at the lower levels is actually a pretty good idea because it's fairly easy to get your epics to level 2 or even level 3 and a level 2 epic is balanced against level 7 commons and level 5 rares. So until you have your commons up to level 7 and your rares up to level 5, those epics um, in, a, in a relative sense are a little bit stronger than your other cards so that's why you see a lot of people using a ton of epics in the lower arenas but as you progress up to the higher arenas it gets harder and harder to keep those epics up to a competitive level now I'm going to go ahead and use a cannon to pull the hog rider into the middle of my base and notice how I use the goblins at the very last second to distract the P.E.K.K.A because I need the cannon to stay alive to distract the hog rider long enough until it dies and in the end we take out the P.E.K.K.A before it makes it to my tower and take a look at the right hand tower there my giant makes it to the tower doing a solid amount of damage bringing his tower all the way down to 354 health so I have a pretty strong damage lead so far in this battle gonna go ahead and use the Valkyrie to take out the Skeletor Army because the Skeletor Army if left unattended will actually do a ton of damage to your tower and that's actually a pretty good strategy that I've used before is pairing up the Skeletor Army with either a Rage spell or a Free spell and catching your opponent off guard now the Valkyrie going in there thankfully getting one hit off bringing his tower down to 195 health but unfortunately for me at this low level my fireball isn't strong enough to finish off that tower so I have to go in with another push now the musketeer survives here so I'm going to spend the additional 5 elixir with a giant up front to support her because I've already spent the 4 elixir on that musketeer so I might as well spend the additional 5 and set up a strong counter push now he's going to do an opposite push of his own with the hog rider as well as the goblin barrel now unfortunately my zaspel isn't high enough level to watch out those goblins so I'm forced to use my own goblins and in the process I take a little bit of tower damage but I'm going to ignore that and try and go for the 3 crown victory the giant is up there doing a good amount of work to his tower bring it down to 1500 health so now all we have to do is go on with one final giant push and hopefully i can take out the tower for the three crown victory so he's gonna start setting up a pekka push on the left hand lane i'm gonna ignore it like i said and go for that three crown victory because the pekka is a fairly slow unit and all he's really doing is spending all of his elixir on the offense so hopefully he won't have any elixir left over to defend he drops down a valkyrie in the back to take out my musketeer gonna go ahead and use the minions in the back to take it out but unfortunately his troops are so strong they take out my valkyrie my minions as well as my musketeer but it won't matter in the end because the giant is still alive doing work to his king tower giving me the three crown victory let's go ahead to the next replay so here we are guys facing off against tie 922 a level 7 on the top there I'm going to sit back a quick second. I don't really have the greatest starting hand. So I'm going to wait till I hit 10 Elixir and hopefully wait for my opponent to make the first move because he is a higher level and I also have a pretty bad starting hand. He's going to go ahead and use the Witch in the left hand lane. So I'm going to counter with a Musketeer behind my King Tower. The reason I use the Musketeer behind the King Tower is I want her to meet the Witch on my side of the arena. That way she'll also have the Crown Tower support to protect her. I'm going to go ahead and use the Zaspel to stun those minions and allow the Musketeer to one shot them with the Valkyrie up front to take out the Witch. And now I'm going to start setting up a pretty strong counter push with the Fireball going down, taking out all the archers and my opponent has no elixir left to defend so I'm able to do a decent amount of damage to that tower bringing it down to 550 health 
Gonna go ahead and use the goblins in the middle of my base to take out that skeleton army. I notice how I use the goblins in the middle and not on top of the skeleton armies, and that's because the goblins take a little bit of time to spawn, and you want them to fully spawn and start defending themselves before they get attacked. If I would have used the goblins in the middle of the skeleton army, they would have all been killed before they spawned, and the skeletons would have made it to my tower doing damage. Gonna go ahead and use the cannon to distract that giant, and then use the Valkyrie in the back to take out all those spear goblins, with the minions in the middle of my base taking out the giant even further. So we're doing pretty good so far. We're about even on elixir i have more troops on the battlefield and i also have a pretty strong damage lead many is going back there but unfortunately they do die by the archers so they aren't able to get any additional damage onto the tower i'm gonna go ahead and wait for the archers to cross the bridge and then use my musketeer to take them out because i don't want to take any chip damage on my tower also going to go ahead and use the goblins to distract that mini pekka because the mini pekka will be able to one shot my musketeer and then go onto the tower so i have to distract it and right here once again he's using the skeleton army I'm going to go ahead and use the zap spell to protect my musketeer and hopefully she'll be able to go back on a counter push and maybe at least get one shot in the tower doing additional chip damage so here we are guys almost in the double electric period his tower is sitting at 416 health both of my towers Still pretty much full health. Gonna go ahead and use the Valkyrie to soak up that bomber hit. Like I said, I want to prevent any chip damage if I can. And now I know my opponent has the Minion Horde in his deck. So I want to save the Fireball because I'm expecting a Minion Horde. And there it goes. Down goes the Fireball taking out all the archers as well as the Minion Horde. Allow my giant free access to the tower. Giving me that one crown victory. So notice how I didn't use the Fireball immediately to take out the archers. Because I knew my opponent had the Minion Horde in his deck. And that's a big part of winning in this game. Is remembering what kind of counter cards your opponent has in his deck. And keeping that in mind when you start setting up a push. Trying to be one step ahead of your opponent. So pretty clutch defense right there. With the cannon in the middle of my base distracting the giant. As well as the Valkyrie Musketeer combo taking it out. And with 22 seconds left. All I really have to do is just keep defending. And I should be able to hold up for the one crown victory. So Musketeer up there doing work, taking out all the troops that he's dropping down, not giving him any chances to set up an offense. Giant going down finally, but down goes a second cannon to distract it. So with only six seconds left, he doesn't have enough time to take out my tower. So here we go guys, giving the one crown victory. Let's go ahead to the next replay. So here we are guys, facing off against God's Fury 7, level eight versus level five. And once again, facing off against an opponent with a ton of epics in their deck. Like I said before, you see this a lot in the lower arenas, because relative to the commons and the rares, those epics are pretty strong. Now he's coming in pretty hot here with a Prince Goblin Barrel push. Gonna go ahead and use the Fireball to take out the Goblins, but unfortunately the Prince survives with one health left, getting a charge attack on my tower. And take a look at how much damage that Prince does in one hit, bringing my tower all the way down to 1300 health. So our towers are about a thousand health apart right now from one Prince hit. If my tower was even level 6, that Prince wouldn't have got that charge attack off because he only had one health left when he got that hit off. So definitely pretty unfortunate. We're going to start setting up a push here on the right hand side with that giant doing a slow push. Now he drops on the giant skeleton there and take a look at how I defend this with the Valkyrie to distract and notice the location of my musketeer placement using her on the right hand side of the arena because that way she'll be able to defend the left hand lane and then go back on a counter push on the right hand side to support my giant really maximizing the use of my elixir right there. Now he drops down the skeleton army, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the zap spell to take him out. That's the reason I had the zap spell in this deck, is to take out skeletons and stuff like that, because my zap spell isn't high enough level to do really anything against goblins, but like I said, because I'm facing so many people using epics in their deck, I'm expecting lots of skeleton armies, so that's why I have the zap spell in my deck. In fact, in this replay, as well as the last couple of replays, my zap spell was only level three. It isn't until the last replay that I wanna show you guys that I upgraded my zap spell to level five. Now he comes in here with a pretty clutch goblin barrel. I don't have my fireball or my zaspel available, and I end up taking a ton of damage by those goblins. My tower is sitting at 560 health, but thankfully earlier on, that giant did work for me to his tower. So we're pretty even on the score here. Even though he started out with like 500 more health on his tower, we are still pretty even. Now I'm gonna sit back here until I get to 10 Lecture. He's gonna come in pretty aggressive with a giant skeleton minion horde push. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the fireball to take out the minions because my zap spell won't really do work against them. And then I'm gonna use the, the goblins there to distract that giant skeleton. And because the goblins aren't gonna be enough, I'm forced to use the Valkyrie as well. But the giant skeleton making his way up on the right hand side. Now, I made a pretty big mistake there if you didn't notice. I used the Valkyrie in the middle of my base to distract against that giant skeleton. If you're using a Valkyrie against a giant skeleton, you want to place it behind the giant skeleton because that way after the giant skeleton dies, the Valkyrie will walk across the bridge and get out of range of the giant bomb before it explodes. But because I used the Valkyrie in the middle of my base, it got hit by the giant bomb explosion and died before going back on a counter push. But that's some pretty strong pressure here with a giant on the left hand tower as well as a Valkyrie Musketeer. The Valkyrie Musketeer combo goes down with the Minion Horde 
taking out my giant before the far ball lands, but all that really was doing was forcing my opponent to spend Elixir on defense and not setting up any pushes. Gonna go ahead here and use the Zap spell to weaken those goblins, but notice how they didn't kill it and I took a little bit of damage, but in the end it wasn't enough for him and I was able to hold on to the one crown victory. Giving him a little thumbs up there because I was happy to beat a level 8 opponent. Let's go ahead here to the next replay. So here we are guys with the final replay, and this battle was actually the battle that brought me into Royal Arena itself, but it was a pretty tough battle, both of us went back and forth quite a bit, and it wasn't until late in the overtime period that I won the battle. I did struggle a little bit versus this guy's card levels, his giant is level 6, and my cannon is only level 6, all my rares besides my giant are level 4, so it was definitely a pretty, a pretty big struggle facing off against that level 6 giant. Whenever you have a common the same level as your opponent's rares, like I said, it's definitely a pretty big uphill battle. Now he's going to be pretty aggressive here with a giant on the right hand side as well as some barbarians on the left hand lane. Gonna go ahead and use my Valkyrie to defend against the Barbarians, and then use that Fireball to take out the Bomber on the right hand side, because the, I don't want the Bomber doing work to my tower or my cannon. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that Zap spell to weaken the Giant as well as the minions, and in the end, we don't take any damage to my tower, so we defend it pretty well there. We are also even on the Lecture, and I've also taken back to a better hand here, so I wanna start setting up a push on the left hand side with my Giant. Now because I know my opponent is using a Giant deck as well, I'm kind of expecting him to start doing a Giant push of his own, so I'm gonna save some Elixir for defense if I have to. As you can see, we dropped down Giants on opposite lanes, both making their way slowly up to the bridge. Gonna go ahead once I hit 10 Elixir and start getting ready for this defense because his Giant is higher level, so I have to play with the defensive mindset. And that's my strategy, guys, whenever I'm playing against a higher level, is I play with more of a defensive mindset than an aggressive one. I try and focus on defense, and then if I can, I can set up some counter pushes from that. So taking out these Spear Goblins with that Valkyrie, gonna go ahead and use a Fireball as well as the minions in the left hand lane, but unfortunately, his Zap spell is high enough level to one-shot my minions, so they weren't able to finish off the Barbarians, and as a result, the Giant doesn't do nearly as much damage as they could have to that tower, but we still have the damage lead in this battle. His Bomber coming here, gonna go ahead and wait and just let my tower take it out, and just soak up that one Bomber hit, using the Zap spell on the right-hand side to finish off those minions, and so far, we have the damage lead, and we also are pretty even on the Elixir. He's ahead by about two or so, but nothing too big that I can't come back from. He's setting up another Giant pushing the right-hand side, dropping down right at the bridge, keeping the pressure on. Gonna go ahead once again, use the cannon in the middle of my base to distract the giant with the Valkyrie in the back to take out all the Barbarians. Now my Valkyrie isn't high enough level, normally a Valkyrie is a great counter against Barbarians, but because the Valkyrie is level 4 versus level 7 Barbarians, she does die, and I'm also forced to use the Fireball to take them all out, but in the end, it was a pretty good defense, we only took a little bit of damage to his tower. Now, he's gonna go once again with that giant, and like I said, I'm keeping a defensive mindset. Notice that how when I hit 10 Elixir, I didn't start going on the offensive. I'm waiting for my opponent to waste the Elixir on offense, and I'm trying to win some positive Elixir trades on defense, and waiting for the perfect opportunity to set up the push. And right here, because I already spent the Elixir on a Valkyrie as well as a Musketeer, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing a push with the Giant on the right hand side. With a clutch Fireball going down, damage those Barbarians as well as taking out the minions, giving me a huge Elixir win. With the Giant up front doing work for me, the Valkyrie as well with the Musketeer in the back, doing damage to his tower. Now he drops down his giant, which actually pushes back my musketeer, forcing it to retarget to the giant. But in the end, we do work to the tower, bringing it down to 800 health, fireball going down, taking out the uh, minions, but unfortunately I missed the bomber with that fireball. So the bomber in two hits, bring the tower all the way down to 890 health. Now I'm trying to set up the final push here with the giant on the left hand lane. His giant coming in with the bomber in the back, but thankfully my tower decides to lock onto the bomber first instead of the giant which was really important because if that bomber would have survived, he would have done work to my tower. Meanwhile, my giant on the left hand lane doing damage to his tower, bringing it all the way down to 380 health, and now all I need is one final giant hit paired up with a fireball to finish off his tower. So I'm gonna go completely aggressive here with the giant up front as well as the musketeer in the back. He drops down barbarians, but I'm gonna ignore them. All I need is one giant hit with that fireball, taking out his tower, giving me the one crown victory, finally getting into Royal Arena. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please show your support by hitting that like button. And if you want to see more Clash Royale strategy videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But thank you so much for watching guys, and we will see you in the next video.